Hello again, everyone, and welcome to a new edition of uh, Yaltes uh, Diagnostics Webinars. My name is Marcos. I am training manager at Kojali, and today we will talk about the ADA, ADA systems and its calibration with uh, Yaltes Diagnostics. As always, and before starting, uh, just remember that uh, if at any moment during the webinar you have any questions to make, there is a chat window avail available for that. My colleague uh, Maria uh, will be there supporting with the answers. And also, if you prefer, uh, you can also write uh, an email to us uh, with your questions to customer support at jaltes.com. Okay, customer support at jaltes.com. The webinar is being recorded. And it will be shortly published in our YouTube channel so that you can watch it again in future or you can even share it with uh, someone else, okay? And last but not least, uh, in order to be always up to date of everything which is new with Yaltes, uh, like news, training material, software updates, etc., make sure make sure uh, that you check uh, our website, uh, www.kojaliusa.com and follow us on uh, our social media. Uh, we are present in Facebook and also in, in LinkedIn, okay? So, all right, guys, uh, let's move now to see our agenda. Okay, uh, we will start from the basics, explaining what ADAS means, and then the different types of uh, systems, okay? And then we will see why it is uh, very important, the calibration of these systems and how we can make it. Uh, this will lead us to the third section of the webinar in which we will introduce our new Jaltes ADAS calibration equipment. And finally, we will take a look at uh, the current Jaltes coverage regarding ADAS systems. And we'll see also some practical example uh, during the software. At the very end of the presentation, we will uh, also review the pricing uh, for this uh, new Jaltes ADAS calibration equipment. All right, so, okay, guys, let's go with it. Okay, what is, uh, what is ADAS, uh, first of all? Uh, well, ADAS stands for Advanced Driver Assistance Systems, and it refers to a variety of electronic systems that are present in uh, the present in, in the vehicles, uh, all kind of vehicles, and these systems are use uh, are using advanced technologies uh, in order to help the driver in the driving process to increase the vehicles and road safety. In other words, uh, this system's um, objective or this system's goal is to reduce the number of crashes and to mitigate uh, mitigate the severity of this crisis. Of these curses. Uh, we are going to find multiple names out there uh, that refers to the same concept, uh, such as collision mitigation, mitigation systems, CMS, or forward uh, collision accident mitigation. Okay, so it, it depends. Uh, but in any case, and regardless of the name that we want to use, uh, we are talking always about radars, uh, cameras lidars and other kind of sensors used for collision avoidance uh, purposes, okay? All these systems uh, can work together to control and oversee the area surrounding the vehicle, alerting the driver in case of necessity so that he can react on time. And actually, some of these systems already have the capability of taking action and momentarily control the vehicle if the driver doesn't react in a timely manner in order to prevent or mitigate a crash. Okay, so let's go over some of the most common driving support systems that we are going to find on commercial vehicles. The ACC or Adaptative Cruise Control is a system uh, which automatically increase or decrease the speed of the vehicle to keep a safe following distance with the vehicles ahead. There are some advanced advanced versions of these uh, systems uh, that can even slow, stop, and accelerate the vehicle uh, in traffic jams. Uh, this system, the ACC, works thanks to radars and computer-connected cameras. 
Then we also have the uh, LDW, the Lane Departure Warning, which is a system that will alert drivers whenever they drift out of the uh, of the lane by uh, using visual uh, vibration or sound warnings. These systems uh, rely on road marking to determine to determine if we have drift out of our lane or not. Then we also have the FCW, the forward collision warning, uh, which is designed to warn drivers if they are about to crash into a slower moving or a stop car or any of the any other object ahead. Okay. And finally, we got the uh, AEB, the automatic uh, emergency braking, uh, which is usually paired with the previous one with the forward collision warning. And uh, what the automatic uh, emergency braking does is basically uh, scanning the road while driving and send warning alerts to the drivers whenever they are about to crash into another vehicle or to another object. object. If the driver doesn't react on time, the system will quickly break or even stop to avoid the crash. It works thanks to the camera and uh, or radar sensors located in the front of the vehicle. It is important to make a pause here and try to understand the current situation uh, regarding the implementation degree of these uh, safety systems in the market. Uh, the ADA systems are not something completely new, and according to the industry experts, uh, they must be understood as a building block technology. Okay, the ABS, uh, the anti-lock brake systems that we, everybody knows, uh, came to the world about uh, 25 years ago already, and this system is considered by many as the basement in which uh, additional layers of ADA systems are built on top of each other. Over the years and after the ABS appearance, we have seen how many other technologies were showing up, such as the stability control, the radars, cameras, and more. These different technological layers have been providing new messages to be read and new answers to be delivered by the ECUs. In today's newest commercial vehicles, all these different sensors are able to communicate and to understand with each other. Obviously, the more system we have in our vehicle, the more information we will be able to manage. And consequently, that means to be able to make better decisions and to achieve a better driving, driving performance and ultimately to reduce driving hazards. The full autonomous driving of the trucks uh, seems to be the final goal of these uh, technology developments. However, uh, that moment uh, seems to be a little bit far in time, according to industry experts, as we will need at least uh, another 20 or 30 years until we reach uh, the full autonomy level. Actually, uh, right now, we will be just stepping into the second of five levels in this staircase to the full autonomy. But until that moment comes, we will have more and more of these uh, new technologies incorporated in commercial vehicles. Okay, so before moving forward uh, to the next section, uh, to the next slide, uh, I would like to launch a quick poll uh, to know uh, your experience regarding ADA systems and their calibration. So my colleague Maria right now is going to launch the, the question. Okay, whenever you want, Maria. Okay, so the poll is already open. The question uh, is, have you or your customer ever had the necessity of performing a calibration of the cameras, radars, etc., present in the ADA systems? So please guys, uh, just go ahead with your answers. We still have a few seconds. Basically, we just want to know your previous experience with uh, ADAS systems. If you had any, any case in your shop or any of your customers requested at some point any kind of uh, calibration for the systems. Okay, we're still gathering 
the answers. Already the 80% of you guys already vote. Okay. Perfect. Okay. So uh, it's already uh, one minute. 80% uh, of the people vote. We can see that almost the 40% of you uh, has answered yes. And then the almost uh, now is the 64 no. Uh, so of course, uh, this is, uh, uh, as we said before, this is a new technology, uh, but this, uh, the, the number of these systems on the vehicles uh is growing and growing uh every day more and more so probably if we make this question in about two years um the answers uh, will be almost everyone answering yes okay all right so thank you for for your answers thank you maria as well uh, we continue with uh the presentation all right so as we know uh as we know, in recent years, uh, the adoption of new electronic uh, technologies by the American trucking industry lags slightly behind the European industry. Uh, when it comes to ADA systems, since 2014, uh, the European commercial vehicle manufacturers are required by the European regulations to include systems such as the stability control, the automatic emergency braking or the lane departure warning okay in the, into the new vehicles actually uh, last year additional regulations were approved by the european commission in order to boost the road safety uh, new regulations that again will require to commercial vehicles manufacture the inclusion of more adas features in the new vehicles from 2022 especially new features regarding the blind, blind spots around the vehicle okay just to mitigate all these uh, hazards uh, uh, related to the to the blind spots on the other hand uh, in north america either systems are not something new either uh, as we could find them present uh, not just in trucks but also of course in most of uh, passenger cars manufacturers over the last decade the trucking industry is just following uh, that path on the that, that path uh, on the on the passenger cars um, and despite of the lack of a strong regulation in this matter in north america most of the oems have now made collision mitigation mitigation systems as a standard fitment on their own highway models actually important independent institutions like the insurance institute for highway safety uh, the iihs will be driving the adoption and acceptance of these uh, technologies through the publication of different studies that have been proving the effectiveness and also the benefits of their use the following chart uh, is showing the adoption rates of ADA systems on the United States fleets uh, in 2018. Uh, it was a study uh, performed or carried out by uh, fleet owner and informal engaged uh, research. And as you could see, almost the 75% of the big fleets that were asked answered that they had made the decision or they have made the decision of investing on ADA systems for their fleet's vehicles. This adoption rate was less than 30% in 2014. So that could give you an idea on how these technologies are not something on the future, but a today's reality. Okay, so let's move now into the ADAS, ADAS calibration area or, or part of the presentation. Uh, since uh, truck manufacturers are incorporating uh, more and more ADAS features into their vehicles, it is important to understand not just the technology itself, but also the reparability of these technical features. A precise and correct calibration of these systems is going to be super important in order to make sure that all the safety measure, all the safety features perform as they should uh, a ground calibration uh, may cause late or 
incorrect responses from the vehicle to the information captured by the cameras, uh, radars, or sensors. Okay, so let's take a look right now to some of the uh, moments or some of the circumstances uh, that will require a calibration or reset of these systems. Okay, for instance, one of the most common ones is going to be after uh, windshield uh, replacement or uh, after the installation of a new uh, windshield. Okay. Also, whenever the radar, uh, the camera, or the, the bracket or the support of the camera are uh, replaced, okay. So let's say that we got an accident or we have performed a vehicle, a vehicle body repair, and during this uh, accident or during during this uh, body repair, uh, we have affected somehow the windshield. So in this case, uh, we will need to perform a calibration as well. Also after a wheel alignment, uh, particularly if uh, the windshield with a camera mounted uh, to it was replaced. Uh, also, of course, whenever we got some fault codes uh, which are related to the calibration of uh, any of these uh, systems, or whenever uh, we are, for instance, uh, changing the, the height or, or the suspension on the, on the vehicle, okay? So um, the ADAS calibration uh, could be divided in two main uh, types. Uh, we got, uh, on the one hand, static calibration, and on the other hand, dynamic calibrations. The type of calibration uh, will depend on the vehicle manufacturer and obviously on the system itself. Uh, we're gonna see some examples uh, later on. The dynamic calibrations uh, must be carried out through a road test and they require certain driving conditions uh, at the manufacturer prescribed speed with optimum uh, weather conditions over a set di distance uh, etc for this type of calibration uh, we will need uh, obviously uh, some hardware which is going to be the rp1210 device uh, with the right connectors which would be uh, most likely the 9-pin connector, the 6 to 9-pin adapter, or the OBD2 uh, connector for most of the commercial vehicles out there. And also, uh, we will need a diagnostic software connected to the, to the vehicle while performing the, the test. And then we got the static calibrations, uh, which must be carried out in a specific uh, workshop uh, environment. So we will need to, to make sure that the level floor is stable and, uh, and is well leveled, of course. Uh, we will need to have uniform lighting, etc. And uh, for this uh, type of calibration, uh, we will not need to have uh, like a, a driving test, okay? Uh, the type of calibration this type of calibration requires the use of uh, specific uh, sensitive equipment, like a calibration frame with uh, different different targets, uh, plus a diagnostic software with uh, coverage for each of these calibrations, of course. Okay, so this is uh, we're entering right now in the third part of the of the uh, webinar in which we're going to introduce the new Delta Sadas calibration equipment. Okay, a funny thing is that while we were preparing this webinar, uh, we got the good news uh, that we're finally ready to start providing the new gel Tesseras calibration equipment to the, to the US market. And it will be available in the next few weeks. So here we are proudly, proudly introducing our new product to, to all of you. Uh, right now, I'm gonna share a video with you so that you can see uh, how this uh, calibration equipment looks like. Just give me one second. All right, so uh, the new compact uh, Jaltus ADAS calibration equipment uh, 
that you just uh, have seen has been designed, manufactured, and supervised uh, by our product engineering department. It has a modular and flexible design that avoids uh, unnecessary displacements of the whole frame. And also one of the, its main uh, features is that it is easily portable and operable, and it can also be folded. Okay, of course, I'm following our Delta's philosophy, it works in, in all makes. So um, this new uh, Delta's ABS calibration equipment uh, perfectly uh, combines uh, with the Delta's diagnostic software. Uh, we will talk about it in a few seconds, but before that, uh, let's take a look at the different parts that come within the ABS calibration equipment. So first of all, uh, we have the main frame or the structure with uh, mirrors and measuring scales. Also, uh, we got the radar calibration laser or laser. Uh, as well, we have the targets for the calibration of the front camera, uh, which are optimized for the different manufacturers. Uh, okay, and then the self-centering wheel connection that we will use to make sure that both the frame and the ADAS calibration panel are uh, perfectly aligned uh, regarding the, the vehicle. As I have just mentioned, uh, the Jalte software will provide us with uh, all the necessary information for the ADAS calibration in an easy and effective way. And it will do it for each track manufacturer. Uh, first of all, uh, it helps the technician with uh, the auto detection of the vehicle, and then it provides step-by-step uh, -step guides for the calibrations, as well as detailed instructions for the preparation of the ADAS calibration equipment. Another, oh, sorry about that. Another of the uh, most interesting features uh, that we're going to find in uh, Jalte software is the capability uh, for the technician to generate a diagnostic or calibration report. Uh, it is very important for the repair shop to be able to verify and document the health status of the vehicle whenever uh, the vehicle arrives to the shop, but also when the vehicle gets back to the road, okay? Let's move now into the fourth uh, part of the presentation. Uh, we're going to take a look at the current uh, Jaltes ADAS coverage. Okay. And when it uh, when it comes to it, uh, you will find uh, calibrations for the cameras and radars of the most common ADAS systems in the market, uh, which uh, mainly come from two manufacturers, uh, Bendix and uh, Meridor Guapco. Okay. Uh, there are also uh, other calibrations for different safety systems, uh, such as in Mercedes-Benz or in Isuzu or Freightliner or Mitsubishi Fusos. Uh, but uh, in the States, the, the most of the, of the ADAS calibrations are going to be around these two manufacturers, Bendix or uh, Meritor Wapco. Uh, for instance, in Bendix, uh, we will find the procedures for the camera installation uh, as well as the the camera calibration in the Wingman Fusion uh, FLC20. And first of all, uh, under releases and procedures, uh, we're going to find the step by step procedures for the camera installation uh, so that we can easily set it up. This installation is uh, particularly important because depending on the OEM, uh, the camera position could be either in the center, in the center line of the windshield or it could be slightly offset to one of the sides. Uh, the replacement of uh, these cameras is not cheap, uh, as they could go up to 1,000 or 1,300 uh, dollars. Uh, therefore, uh, we will want them to be correctly installed and calibrated for, uh, for the best performance, okay? Then uh, for the for the calibration, we will need to uh, to use the gel test uh, calibration equipment and uh, the specific target for this uh, manufacturer. Okay. Before uh, before starting the calibration process, it will be important to prepare correctly the ADAS calibration equipment. 
and the Yalta software will give us detailed instructions, as I was saying, uh, on how to place it, uh, how to level it, and center the frame, and assemble the wheel centering uh, connection tools on the drive axle, level the ADAS panel support frame, etc. In order to know the name of the references needed for this calibration, uh, we will need to display the Yaltes Tools Reference Guide, which is included into the software, and you could easily uh, easily see uh, which are the, the reference part numbers that you will need in order to, to perform the, the calibration, okay? Then, uh, once everything is ready, uh, we just need to start the calibration and follow the instructions given uh, by the software during the whole process. Then, on top of the of the camera installation and calibration, uh, of course, Yaltes uh, provides uh, fault codes reading and clearing uh, for for the system, uh, live data, uh, system technical data, wiring diagram, uh, etc. All right. Also, within Bendix, uh, we find the calibration features for the forward-looking rudder uh, for the 20 and 2021 20, version of the Wingman ACB advanced uh, systems, which are systems that have been in the market for about uh, 10 years uh, already. For the FLR20, uh, we could manually calibrate the camera sensor by following the specific release. Uh, this calibration could also be performed with the help of the Jaltes ADAS calibration equipment. Uh, and this could be done uh, for both, for the 20 and the 21 version of the system. The camera calibration will be needed whenever the system is not detecting the vehicles on the road properly, or whenever uh, we are getting the uh, diagnostic travel code 46 which is letting us know that the radar sensor is incorrectly adjusted. So JALTE software offers a calibration test for this system, which includes uh, diagnostics and also the possibility to generate a report with the results of the test and the, the calibration. And then, uh, as for the other main ADAS manufacturer of the market, Meritor Wapco, in addition to diagnostic uh, features, uh, Jaltes will cover the manual calibration of the forward-looking radar in the onward system. This one is going to be an static calibration, uh, and it could be carried out by following the instructions uh, given in the technical release that you have in the in the screen. Also, for the lane departure warning assistance, uh, we could reset the camera and also uh, find the specific manufacturer instructions for the camera installation. As we have just seen on the Bendix side, uh, performing a correct camera installation will be particularly important for a normal performance of the safety system. Finally, for the onward plus, uh, Jaltes will provide us with uh, diagnostic features as well as with technical information and parameter settings. Uh, we're expecting to have this system calibration available in next uh, software updates. Okay, so just uh, keep an eye on it. And uh, we're going to to move forward. Uh, we are in the in the five. Uh, state of the webinar, uh, which is going to be the, the pricing and the references of the uh, new Jaltes ADAS calibration solutions. Uh, so, as you can see on the screen, um, there are four main uh, parts that we mentioned before. We got the uh, support structure for the calibration, uh, for the calibration panels. Uh, we also have the uh, radar and calibration kit. Uh, for for tracks and buses, and the laser wheel alignment tools uh, that comes in in two units for uh, for the two sides of the of the vehicle, and uh, we got the uh, Bendix Wingman Fusion Panel, which is going to be probably uh, uh, the, the the most used uh, panel and calibrations uh, static calibrations on the North American market. Okay, so this is going to be basically the composition of the kit, and when it comes when it comes to uh, pricing, 
okay for all the um, all, all of those all of you that you are already using Yaltes uh, on the commercial vehicles version uh, the MSRP is going to be 7395 okay and then for all of you that you are not still using the, uh, the software the Yaltes commercial vehicle software uh, you have another option, which is going to be uh, a little bit more expensive, but it will come uh, with the four uh, different references that we have just mentioned, but also with the uh, Jaltes link kit plus the connectors, uh, the 9-pin connector, the 6-9-pin adapter, the OBD2, etc., plus the software activation uh, for the Jaltes ADAS calibration system, uh, okay, and one year of license for the use of this uh, of this software okay so this is going to be uh, basically the the composition uh, and the pricing of the new uh, Jaltes ADA solution okay so uh, just uh, summarizing again if you're already using Jaltes your MSRP is going to be 7395 so you have all the coverage for Jaltas uh, for for the ADA systems included into the commercial vehicles uh, software, but if you are not using Jaltas yet, uh, you have uh, the option to get the hardware, the software, the license of use, and the uh, Jaltas ADA solution, the, all the the portable frame with the the panels and the reader calibration kit plus the the laser wheel uh, alignment tools. Okay, so we got these two options that uh, we are going to launch uh, to the market and uh, as i said before uh, the the solution is going to be available to to order in in few weeks okay and um, finally uh, when it comes to, to the conclusions um, so um, we, we have seen that the ADAS technology um, is not something on, on the future it's a reality in today's world and it's here to stay uh, we're going to see how every day we we find more and more uh, safety systems in in our vehicles and uh, the commercial vehicles on the road um every day most ada systems uh, cameras radars and so on will require uh, calibration uh, alignment uh, and also to be diagnosed uh, we have already seen uh, the high importance of performing these uh, these calibrations uh, so that we we make sure of a correct functioning of these systems, okay? And, uh, well, uh, this is gonna mean uh, for the repair industry uh, two, two things. Uh, first of all, it's gonna be a challenge, okay? Because, of course, uh, the repair industry will need to evolve and to, to, to adopt uh, new strategic changes in order to face this new reality and to continue being uh, competitive of course but at the same time it's going to be a great opportunity uh, as well uh, because uh, we got new customer demands and this could mean also new revenue streams of course and uh, we're thinking about uh, all the uh, makes independent repair shops and also for all uh, these uh, companies that are very specialized on the windshield replacement and repair services so thank you very much, guys. Uh, probably you got some questions, uh, or you have written some questions uh, during the during the webinar. Uh, I'm gonna go through through them right now. Probably Maria already answered some of them. But if you still have some questions, just go ahead, guys, uh, over the chat, and uh, I will be more than happy to to give answers to all of you. Yeah, here you have some questions from, from Trevor. Says, can you use any ADAS calibration hardware with the Delta system? So, okay. no, Perfect. you would need to use the, the Delta software. At the end of the day, if you have another one and those targets are going to be functional, well, they should work. But this is designed through the procedures. So what you saw on some of the screens and uh, what the video showed you were targets specifically laid out for, for Delta's. Unfortunately, Marco's going to show you with the software how that works, but there's going to be a step-by-step -step procedure laying all that out and showing you how to go about it. So if the target is not calibrated or set up or it's not the one that's designed for Delta, so there might be some incongruencies. So there might be some differences. 
Then we have another question from Ben. It says, what size footprint do you need for CV calibrations? When we're looking at the size, um, it's pretty much the length of the, the truck, not, not the length, the width of the truck. After that, you're about two feet out on each side, depending on, on the adjustment you're making. And depth wise, probably looking at 10 feet, being reasonable on it. The good thing is that it allows you to move. So the structure has wheels on the bottom and, and you can move it to the best location, even if it's not a fixed spot in your shop, because we understand that sometimes you don't have all that space and it's gonna be necessary to move it around based on availability. Okay, I hope that one answered there. Um, here, let me see, we got a couple more. Are there specifications given to a customer because of the purchase price? They need to know what they need in their shop. So this question is from Jason. What we're doing is that we're going to offer the, the kit directly um, with the four part numbers. Given that we have different targets and radars for Renault or Volvo systems that are not available here, those have been eliminated. And the part numbers that you see um, are pretty much kitted off so that you can get what what you need okay that way the customer is going to know that they're going to be able to resolve um whatever comes into their shop based on the u.s market requirements let me see i got a couple more here that are not answered where do you get the setup information and the steps to setting the frame up okay so ben that's what i was saying beforehand when you go into the the software and you go into the Wingman Fusion, for example, then it's gonna show you exactly what to do. So step one, it's gonna tell you how to open up the, the target. Then it's gonna show you how to tighten it up and there's gonna be a, a level there so that you can make sure that it's flat to the surface. There's gonna give you about seven or eight steps. First step is gonna be on the installation of the camera. Um, so those of you that are accustomed to using child tests, it would be like when you're doing the VGT calibration, first step is going to be the, the camera setup, and then it's going to be the calibration. So you really don't need to do anything. Um, child tests will tell you step-by-step step on how to go about it. And then when it needs to, to have manual interaction with the, with the lasers or, or with the moving of the targets, it'll tell you, and it'll wait for you to manually give the next instruction. And to finish off, if there's going to be an electronic calibration that needs to be done, just press the button. Hyperlink will take you, and it's going to go. It's going to go to that direction. What is the frame part number? Well, you can shoot us an email there. Um, we're working those final details out. So, in the presentation, there's going to be two handouts. Um, those will be sent out to you as well um, with the follow-up email. And the, and the video that the system sends automatically. So there you're gonna be able to have all the parts. Uh, the full kit's gonna be four part numbers and then you can, any questions that you have from there or if you need clarification as if it works to you, to your needs, then just shoot us an email, customer support at deltest.com and we'll be more than happy to, to give it a look and make sure that it fits everything you need. And I think I got, all the questions here out of the way. I'm gonna take advantage and follow up with one that Chris was asking us beforehand while we were in the in the session. Um, I got that one out of the way, but he was asking is uh, ADA systems are being updated by the OEMs pretty frequently. How will Dell test be able to keep current with on the fly changes from the OEMs like Bendix, WAPCO, ZF, and Detroit? So pretty much I was telling them that our, our development procedure just goes in the same way as Delta, where we're going to be following and testing vehicles as soon as they come out into the market and then developing the software. In the case of ADAS, the technology is normally developed in, in European trucks first, and then they use that same technology with slight modifications because of the dimensions and so on, and they've applied that to American vehicles, okay? So the experience that we have up to date is that it's already going to be available by the time that it hits the U.S. market. Because as Marcos was saying, there's about six to 12 different systems here in the States. So it's, it's pretty relative. And in Europe, there's about three times as much as that. Uh, every OEM, every Euro 6 truck has these already in place. And they even have electronic braking systems, which don't seem to be coming anytime soon to the U.S. So on technology-wise, considering that we're 
based out of Europe and developing from there, we should be we should be good for that. And the other one was, does your setup include the Bendix radar physical alignment? You guys saw that in the in the content where everything was included. So yeah, that's the one that that is set up in that kit because it's it's pretty much the one that you're going to need. That's going to be the most most important one. And I see we have a hand lift up from Stefan. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to mute you, Stefan. If you want to share that question with everybody else. Hello. Yes. Hello together. My question is, since in North America we're running still off of mechanical ride leveling valves, will the measurements for the respective units to, cal to calibrate will be provided in the, in the program, or is it still an OEM thing to figure it out? Like, for example, back in the day when I was at Kenworth, the ride height is between 10.5 and 11 inches, measured from the weld on the axle to the under, uh, under rail of the frame. I think that is one of the most important measurements to take before we even starting to calibrate anything, because if we're sitting too low or too high, we will be out of whack with the, with the whole calibration, correct? That's correct. So all of your initial requirements, uh, guidelines, settings, uh, distances, that will be provided by the tool. Each vehicle has its own restrictions, its own requirements, as you're saying, and those are going to be put in there. Because if not, then the calibration is not going to be effective, and it doesn't really make sense to pursue a whole uh, product line that is not going to work. So the, the software tells you the step-by-step -step procedure, the height, and, and so on. Okay, thank you. I thought so, but just wanted to ask because you didn't mention it. Just in case, thank right? You. <laughs> <Yeah>. Thank you. <laughs> Perfect, thank you. And now I don't see any more questions. So if anybody else wants to, like, if you want to raise your hand, I can just like Stefan did, we can get that done. Okay, here we have Ben. So Ben, I'm going to unmute you and we'll go faster like that. Okay. Ben, all you. Oh, Ben, I can't unmute you. You're self muted. So. Can you hear me now? <laughs> yes. Go ahead. Okay. So what is the, what's an average charge the shop will, uh, do for calibration? How much are they going to bill a customer? To be honest, it's uh, right now we're seeing it exclusively from the dealers, and we haven't really have it, had much of that uh, feedback available. We've been trying to do this. So one of the things was that we weren't even going to present the the whole hard case because it, it was still in development, but we managed to get that sorted out and and done in the last week. So that's why we're we're presenting it. But we don't have that that information to be to be honest. So it's a matter of how much they're charging. We're we're gonna figure that out and we'll include that in our future webinars and ROIs. Um, that's one of the things that we do with most of the things, figure out what the dealer's charging so that you guys can have a comparison. So unfortunately I don't have an answer for you on that one, Ben, but I do know that there's not many aftermarket shops that have this capability just because there's not many tools that are doing this on the truck side. No, but I, I do have customers that are doing uh, automobiles and they have the footprint necessary that they could do trucks too if they had the tools and, it, and were able to do it. So oh, correct. Yeah, so let's do something on that. Um, ben, shoot me an email. Shoot us an email. Um, then uh, Marcos or myself, we will be able to look into that in a little bit more detail in the following days, and we'll have that discussion with you so that we can target it. Okay, and that way we'll have a, a, a clear guideline towards it. That's good. All right, thank you, Ben. All right, uh, Ricky, I see your hand up, but uh, I don't see a mic, so I can't really unmute you. And Ben, you had another question? No, I'm good. I just uh, oh. forgot to <laughs> take my hand down. <laughs> All right, no worries. All right, Jen, so I don't see much more that we have here. So first of all, just like Marcos was saying, thank you all for, for joining us, for your time. Um, we'll continue to elaborate content on how to include the Delta SATA system and make it a, a profitable element into your shop. Um, this is going to be pretty much available whenever in the next couple of weeks. So if you have any questions, reach out to your distributor. That's uh, the key point of, of contact all the time. And then if you need help on figuring out who that is and what that's about, customer support at deltas.com. And we'll work with you and, and let you know a little bit more of the ins and outs as, as they come across. Um, so Marcos, back to you. Thank you for your time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you everyone for joining guys and uh, everyone said.
uh, see you soon in more of these webinars and more more content. Thank you guys.